For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act this way in sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. We'll turn to uh, 1 Timothy. Verse 2, it says, uh, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, and of good behavior, <coughs> hospitable, and able to teach. So, you know, we see here that, uh, you know, he knew that, uh, that if he had done that, and that would give them, he would, he would have a, uh, you know, it would give him cause to talk ill about him. And as a leader, what would it look like when he's leading these people, you know, finishing this wall up, what would it look like if his leader, just, if your leader just ran off? You know, he knew the work, you know, would not be completed. So, and we come up to the wall completed. Excuse me. Um, verse 14. By God, remember Tobiah and Samalat, according to these works, and their prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets, who would have made me afraid. So here we see that um, Nehemiah is praying for his enemies. And saying, hey God, you know, <laughs> you defend me. And, you know, you can't help but think about President Trump and uh, Amorosa today. President Trump's a baby Christian. He's got a lot to learn, but he is definitely not letting God defend him. You know, he's defending himself. You know, tweeting today. Uh, it's crazy, but, uh, you know, how many times in, do we want to defend ourselves? And I've seen it. I've seen it here. I've seen when people attack uh, certain leaders. You know, sometimes I've seen them, you know, maybe go out and try to defend themselves. And, and man, it just fires. It just it gets fired up. You know, the best thing is, is to let the Lord defend us. Say, hey, you know, President Trump should have said, hey, I didn't say that. The Lord will defend me. I've been the perfect answer, but no, <laughs> he'll learn. Uh, but yeah, so in that situation, you know, uh, it tells us to, uh, um, tells us to pray for our enemies. All right, so the wall is completed. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the Lord in 52 days. And it happened when all of our enemies heard it and all the nations around us saw these things. They were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that the work was done by our God. So uh, Elul um, is the lead up to uh, the high holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, and as I was, you know, looking this up, I was 29 days, the little 29 days, and it was said that uh, when Moses, after they sinned and, and uh, built the golden calf, he went up and he prayed and repented. And that, those 29 days were the 29 days that he went up, uh, that Moses went up on the mountain and then the second uh, commandments and received the second commandments. So that's the day of the Lord. So, uh, it was finished um, in 52 days. So, you know, obviously, you know, the wall is tremendous. Um, and apparently, you know, the people working uh, with God in it was a miracle. That's how their enemies looked at it. Uh, you know, it was disheartening to them. Uh, and they perceived that this work was done by God. So, as I was, you know, reading through this, as I mentioned before, I was thinking about school. You know, the school, uh, we had three weeks to build it. And so technically, we worked on some, one, one Sunday after church. That was 19 days. So in 19 days, uh, the 20,000 square foot up fit, the bank of bathrooms, uh, air conditioned units, built all the classrooms upstairs. I mean, yeah, started with a set of demo plans, didn't even have a full set of plans until the second week that we submitted. They turned around and back to us fast. In a couple of days, that's unheard of on the school uh, upfit, and boom, then we were done. If that had not happened in that time, oh man, 
talk about looking bad, it would have been extremely bad. Uh, it looked bad on God, it looked bad on this church, it looked bad on me. It would have been a financial issue, uh, but but God. So I mean, that, that's I look at the wall and I look at that now. You know, when we went in and uh, did the church up there, the big church up there, I would consider that took six months. And on Saturdays, we had 100, 120 people. I would say, all right, if we did this in two months, you know, everybody quit their jobs, came in here, 150 people a day working, then, I mean, it was a miracle anyway, but I mean, that was like, wow, how did that be possible? You know, but the school, I was, I mean, obviously that was that hand of God in that. <coughs> Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah. So this guy was still messing with him. You know, he prayed for him, but he was still, even though he had gotten the wall complete, he was still messing with him. And also, back on the wall, um, those walls were in ruin for more than 100 years. And it only took 52 days for them to put them together. Uh, you know, finally there came a man who did more than wish Jerusalem had walls. He grieved, he ached, he prayed, he asked boldly, he went, he fought, he encouraged, he stood strong, he saw the job through completion. But he also had the people around him with the same kind of heart. And, you know, you can say that, as I'm sitting here looking at it, you know, you can say that about this church building. You know, we all had the same heart, and it was not easy. Um, but everybody was in here serving. Uh, we had ladies, you know, they were doing the lunch. Um, you know, it was just, uh, I mean, it changed my life. You know, I went from here to here spiritually. Just, I mean, I was at church seven days a week for six months. I mean, trust me, that changed my life. But I mean, everybody uh, was working together. We had the same goals, there wasn't any arguing. I never saw any fight. We just all just got down to it, did what we had to do. And there were so many jobs to be done, you know. And then there would be there would be a job that we didn't have the knowledge on, and man, God would bring him the next day or that day. Hey, you know, we don't understand how to do this duck work. And I remember there was a guy. I don't even know where he came from. He was an older guy, and he came in and he did that. Then I had a friend of mine, Phil Laughlin who was invited by somebody else, and we had to build that arch on the uh, stage. I mean, a hundred and, was it a 90 foot arch, you know? I mean, so Phil, being an engineer, he figured it out, went and printed it out, and brought us a print out of it where we taped it to the floor. Boom. I mean, yeah, that was the next day also. I said, oh yeah, you got a job for me? As a matter of fact, I do. You know, and boom. I mean, I, I, I still gives me goosebumps. That was cool. Um, but we have such small ideas of how God can use us. God used a man named Nehemiah to set right a hundred year old problem in less than two months. And the same God sits on the throne in heaven and works through you or through us today. So we don't need to limit God. It's also in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah. And the letters of Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him because he was the son in law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and the son of Jehoadan, and married to the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me. And reported my words to him. Tobias sent letters to frighten me. So this guy was still going at it. Um, Tobias was the man who had opposed the rebuilding work with Sambalot. In Nehemiah 2.10, he was disturbed that Nehemiah came to rebuild the walls. In Nehemiah 2.19 and 4.3, he mocked Nehemiah's work. In Nehemiah 4, 7, he was angry that the work was being done. In Nehemiah 6, 1, 
he was one of the men who tried to get Nehemiah to stop the work and come down to the plane of oh no, uh, where he could be attacked. These Jewish brothers of Nehemiah could not see what was so plain to Nehemiah. Uh, perhaps they did not see much of the evil work of Tobiah firsthand, so they took a hard time believing him. Uh, we imagine him saying, he's always been nice to us. You know, look at what good he has done. Um, it's also possible that they just didn't have the shepherd's heart and the shepherd's eyes Nehemiah had for the people. Uh, Nehemiah was called to God, was called of God to protect God's people and God's work to shepherd. He was watching and on guard in a way that others uh, were not. And that's the job of a shepherd. It's the job of the pastor. It's the job of Pastor David. Uh, you know, and this is a, a sheep and wolf's club, and they do come. And sometimes they are hard to discern, but eventually, you know, they'll show their true colors, and then they have to be dealt with. And uh, you know, that's when the, the shepherd can, you know, start to protect the flock and he'll do what he's got to do. Um, and that's according to God's word. You know, the shepherd, you know, the sheep, you know, they would put them in a whatever corral they had, thorns or sticks, and then the shepherd would lay down at night to protect the sheep. You know, it was, it was his life. He was given his life, literally, the wolves, the bears. He was given his life to protect those sheep. And that's the same way with us, Pastor David and us. It's his responsibility. He's, he's a protector of, of the sheep. Um, and I've seen him do it. And he continues to do it. So... Undoubtedly, they saw Nehemiah as a bad guy. <clears throat> they figured Tobiah's deeds were good, and Nehemiah spoke some strong words against Tobiah. Nehemiah four, four. Nehemiah prays to the evil, to the evil Tobiah plan be turned back upon him, that he be captured and carried away. Nehemiah had to be willing to see him as a bad guy in order to do what was right by the people of God. Now, in past Sunday, I skipped church. And uh, I went and watched uh, one of my good friends, uh, his son, one of my good friends passed away. He was uh, like 30, 38, uh, maybe 35. He left uh, 15. <coughs> and so, you know, and that's my next door neighbor. And uh, so I've been hanging out with Jeffrey when I can. So Jeffrey uh, got baptized in the Dan River. Um, that was cool. I mean, and I, was, I told the wife in the morning, I was excited. I'm like, I bet I'm going to hear some more time of preaching. It's going to be good. And it, it was. And I noticed, and one of the things is I was listening to this about uh, Nehemiah uh, was just bold. And it just tell you the way it was. And this pastor uh, just told us when he was uh, teaching, you know, he said uh, that there was a, a deacon of the satanic church who saw at the gas station. So the guy knew he was, he knew who the guy was, and he went up to him. And he says, hey, Told him the way it was. You know, you need to get right with the Lord, or he's going to go to heaven. And that was that. And uh, you know, I was like, that's pretty bold. And he told me he, when he was preaching, he told us, said, "Hey, man, I, I'm bold. If I need to get your face, I'll get your face. You know, and tell you what you need to hear." And, and he did. I mean, he walked up to some people, and but I just, it was the, it was a waterfall. It was just absolutely beautiful. But I thought, you know, hey, you know, that's that's being bold, and uh, you know. As times get tougher, as you know, man, you just look at the things going on in the earth, the signs. I was watching something last night, the fires, and I said, nobody mentioned the red tide, but we got that red tide down in Florida in the Gulf. I don't know it's historic, but it's pretty big, and I'm thinking, and I thought back to uh, uh, Egypt and the Egyptian when the Lord turned the uh, water to blood. You know, and as we, uh, you know, as we see, as the time gets shorter, you know, People are start. People that aren't not believers are going to start getting even bolder and crazier. You know, and it's our job to be bold and and to tell them just like that pastor did to tell them, hey, you know, if you don't get right with God, you know, you're gonna you know, you you can go to hell. You know, if you're not, you know, if you don't <coughs> accept Jesus. 
And it's going to get down to that point where we got to be bold with our faith. And I'm like, I remember Pastor David talking about, you know, not yet. You're going to hell, you know, on the street corner with a board on. But, uh, you know, maybe what it takes to do these last days, just waking people up. However we have to, however we got to. But Nehemiah had a work to do. And that work was not really going out to attack people like Tobiah. Um, he could leave the Tobias alone as long as they weren't attached to the word of God. So that's where he drew the line. So that is the completion of chapter 6.